Here's why your rendering process is not working. You're using the wrong software, your lighting sucks, and your materials look like they're Minecraft textures. However, if you watch this video all the way through the end, I will show you how we can fix these issues in order to create realistic renders like these. First off, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, you can create realistic renders with a lot of different software. But before we move on to more technical aspects like lighting or materials, let's make sure that we have set up our tools properly. Some software have a longer and more challenging path to create realistic renders, while others don't kill your brain cells and your wallet for an expensive PC. I believe that if you're not super advanced in 3D rendering, and if you don't have a successful 3D rendering business, you should use the SketchUp and Enscape software combination. Now that you have all your tools set up properly, let's make sure you have the technical aspects set down properly. So here's five common mistakes that I see in lighting. Most beginners start off with a super strong light, which provides no contrast and no depth to the render. I think you should always use an HDRI no matter if you're doing an interior or an exterior project. I've talked about this multiple times but I still see people being too lazy and just not using it. Another very common issue that I see is that the exterior lighting and the interior artificial lighting is not at balance. The sun intensity is so high and at the same time the artificial lights are so high and this is just super unnatural because with a sun this bright and in a time of day like this it is very uncommon to have such a strong artificial light. Also, don't forget to make the lights emissive. So I see a lot of people just place a lighting object right outside of the lighting fixture, but they don't actually light up the lighting fixture itself. The way you do this is once you set up your lighting objects, you select the material on the lighting fixture and you make itself luminant or emissive. So as you can see, this looks much better. Next up, another mistake that I see is not using IES profiles. These assets import realistic lighting distribution for your spotlights and you can get plenty of them for free at islibrary.com, which I'm not affiliated by them. So make sure that you actually import these files into your scene and the interior spotlights. The other mistake is not using fake lighting or using it incorrectly. I've talked about this method multiple times in this channel, but not enough people take advantage of it. So here's how you actually put it into action. You can just put spotlights at the outside of the model directing into the interior openings and you can do a four by four row. And I prefer to do the beam angle at the maximum at the highest level, which actually makes these shadows a lot softer. Now, in some instances, this lighting might not work so I also add rectangular light right outside or inside of the window. The most common mistake with this is that I see people abuse these light sources and the scene actually ends up with no clear direction of lighting or shadows. If you get these five issues fixed you're not going to have an issue with lighting however here's the biggest problem that I see people face with materials. First thing is your materials are not seamless. Here's the difference between placing a seamless material and a non-seamless material. Basically, the way that this works is that the 3D software uses a source file which is repeated or tiled over the surface that it is applied to. If the material is not seamless, you will be able to see where the repetition is happening, which definitely doesn't look good. However, if the material is seamless, it will look much more natural. Now, the next step is probably going to 10 extra renders and make the biggest transformation for all of your projects. The other way that you can improve your materials is by using material imperfection. In real life, you rarely see a surface that doesn't have dust, scratches or fingerprints. We would want to add this in our 3D model as well. The way we do this is by drawing a brand new surface within the surface that we want to apply the imperfections to and then download an imperfection map online, import it into the roughness section in the new material that we will duplicate and then apply that onto the new surface that we created. This ensures that we don't over exaggerate it by making the whole material and the surface imperfect. As you can see this makes a huge difference on how realistic your materials look. If you want to find out how much money you can make with 3D rendering, make sure to watch the video right here.